Welcome to the HerbWorks Podcast featuring Roger Drummer, the formulator at HerbWorks.com. An educator in the field of nutrition and Chinese herbalism, Roger has a unique ability to keep things simple by taking all the guesswork out of complicated health issues. HerbWorks is committed to helping you improve your health and enhance your life through herbs and common sense. Welcome to the HerbWorks Podcast. I'm Laura Shockney. And Roger Drummer. Today we are talking about water, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. What are we talking about, Mr. Drummer? Well, today we're going to talk about everything about water. Tap water, bottled water, you know, all the new studies that just came out on plastic, which were really frightening, and then how to have a home unit and what kind of chemicals you want to get out of your water. Why are those chemicals in your water? We're just going to have a talk about all the things that have to do with water. Super. Okay, so first of all, tell me about tap water. Well, tap water is a fascinating subject. (laughs) I got into drinking filtered water, by the way, because I gave lectures for a company that featured a home water unit. And before By that, water unit, what do you mean? Something that mean filters that something water? something you sit on your counter and you pour water into. It's a gravity filter where mm-hmm. it filters through a carbon filter, and which is one of the best ways to get toxins out of your water. And it goes into a holding tank, and then you use that water for drinking. And so I got one of those units through that company, and, and I really loved it. And before that, I was buying bottled water, a really high-quality bottled water, but Bottled water is expensive, you know, mm-hmm. and this is back in the 90s, and we didn't know much about water, and, and all these water companies were sprouting up, and they were in the health food stores, and it was really good quality water, but once I got a machine and could make water for two cents a gallon, it kind of transformed <laughs> my consumption of water. So why should people care about their tap water? Because here's, here's the thing about tap water. The United States has the greatest tap water in the entire world. We have the greatest water system for cleaning water, getting it to your house, and having it come out of the faucet in a form that you can use. But the problem with it is that it's really not fit for human consumption. (laughs) Okay, so we have... (laughs) You're telling me we have the cleanest water insofar as toxins that might occur naturally in a stream or a river have been removed, but it's not safe to drink in most cases? This is my opinion, but I don't think it's fit to drink. Why? Because the water system is set up to give you water that's clean enough that it won't kill you. It's treated with all kinds of chlorine. It contains chlorine byproducts. There's all kinds of chemicals in it, pesticides in it drugs in it. There's now pharmaceutical drugs in it. Because of modern living, we have so many chemicals now that make it into the water supply Mm -hmm. that the systems we have set up in this country never get it out. So our filtration systems have not caught up with our chemical production? Is that what you're saying? It's true, and I don't know if it ever will because they don't think of it as being important, right? And so you have a water that makes it to your house that has fluoride added to it, which is a known brain toxin. You have aluminum added to it. And people always ask me why they put aluminum in it, but it's just so your water doesn't look cloudy. And aluminum's a neurotoxin, just like fluoride. Mm -hmm. You have chlorine byproducts. Now it's loaded with BPA, which is plastic chemical that causes hormonal disruptions, cancer, all kinds of things. And then you've got pharmaceutical drugs. In the last 10 years, they discovered that all these pharmaceutical drugs you throw in the trash and go down the toilet end up in your water Hmm. in like homeopathic amounts. So maybe you're getting a homeopathic amount of uh, Prozac in your water Hmm. every day and an antibiotic at the same time. (laughs) So I I was laughing. I used to live in Santa Monica, and they did a test, and they caught some fish off the pier and found out they all had Prozac in them. The fish did. The fish did. Now, I don't know if it made them easier to catch, but I don't don't think I want to eat a fish with Prozac in it. (laughs) So, but anyway, that's just kind of an I, a, a way of saying that there's so many chemicals in our modern environment, and it all makes it into the water. 
And it's not the U.S.'s government to make that pure, the cleanest thing in the world. It's supposed to be in a form that gets rid of the bacteria type of things that doesn't kill you. So you can drink it safely without it causing you to die within three or four days. Right. So now we have water that is without bacteria that might kill us, but it has chemicals that might eventually kill us. Is kind of what you're saying. Eventually cause other health conditions, other health conditions. combined with your diet that might not be able to get those things out of your system, right? right? If you're not eating a really clean diet that helps all the detox systems of your body work properly, then you're not going to be able to deal with that extra load of chemicals. And besides that, believe me, once I got a water system, it tasted so good compared to tap water. When you go back, you just kind of cringe. Yeah, you just, yeah. Every time you get a glass of water in a restaurant, you either don't ever taste it unless you're desperate. And when you do, you cringe because it's so bad. Well, we've lived all over the United States, you and I, and tap water does taste different depending on where you live. We've always had a filtration system, but in the places where we've lived, we've lived in the Midwest, back east, you know, west coast, all over the place. And um, people drink it and we taste it, but sometimes the people who are used to drinking it don't always taste how nasty it tastes. Oh, no, they don't. We we live in the Las Vegas area, just so in case the listeners want to know. And Las Vegas water has the added bonus of having at least three radioactive chemicals in it from oh, all the geez. nuclear bombs that they tested here in the desert. So, you know, that's that was information just put out by the local hmm. government. So everybody knows it's there. So you want to... You wanna, Take that water that comes to your house and put it through a machine that filters a carbon, you know, gravity filter, which is usually the most economical for anybody to have. And then you put that through a system and then you drink it. It takes all the chemicals out. Of it. And it tastes so much better. Oh, it tastes so much better. And if better. you cook like we do, the quality of water that you use in your soup, in whatever you're making, it it comes through. The taste comes through. Oh, you know, this through. is one of the first things I noticed when I got my machine was how, because I loved, at the time I was working in an herb shop in L.A. and we had all these amazing green teas from all over the world. Mm. We all love tea. And boy, you take that home and make it with a cup of tap water. And it's it's just skank. You can't even drink it. <laughs> what <laughs> but, was that word? What was that word, Mr. Drummer? That word was skank. <laughs> and you, but if you take that same tea and make it with filtered water, you go, oh my god! You can taste the flowers and the oh. the floral backing of it, and all the layers of taste. And with tap water, it's just oh god! It doesn't taste good. You just can't put it down. You that know? is true. So, all right, we've let our listeners know that their tap water may not be tasty. They may not know it's not tasty unless they have tried other filtered other water. waters. That there's a really good reason for filtering your tap water because it has chemicals that you might not want to add to your cup of water right. that you're going to drink. Um, what are some other ways that people can incorporate water in their life in a healthy way? Well, I have a water system, and what I do is, um, you know, because I often am out, you know, and it's really hot here in the summer. The reality is I always carry water, but I have stainless steel bottles that I fill up from my unit and take with me. And that, again, produces water that's two to three cents a gallon as opposed to going into a store mm. and spending $2 for a quart of water. I have such an issue with the let's go spend money on bottled water. One, because so much of the bottled water that you see is actually just tap water that has been filtered and put in a plastic bottle. It right? is. Yeah, it is. You know, this is, this is amazing once you look into it. But the biggest water companies now in the world are two soda pop companies no kidding and why is that because they already own the shelf space in the grocery store so they just switched it over to their brand of water now they're in every same way with the airports you go to an airport you're more than likely going to be buying a bottle of water that's put in there by a company that's a soda pop company and it's just filtered tap water right so you when you pay that i was just at the airport the other day so when you pay that four dollars and 49 cents for that small bottle of water if you read the label 
you will know whether it's spring water that's come from somewhere else or whether it's simply what they call, quote, filtered water, which means it's tap water that some very large corporation put in a plastic bottle. Right. So, but sometimes when you're flying, you just can't get around it. That's an instance where you just have to, you know, suck it up, <laughs> buy a bottle of water. Literally. But, <laughs> but in Starbucks, they usually have an off brand where they, you know, that they sell that's not one of those, that's a different water, and it, some of the money goes to a charity mm-hmm. for you know, helping people get sources of water around the world. So that's not a bad thing. What are some of the ethical water bottles that that are plastic water bottles or sold water bottles? What companies do you like the taste of or recommend because you know they're an ethical company? Well, I have to admit, I don't look into that many waters because I don't buy them anymore. But, you know, here locally, there's one called Real Water, which is really clean, and it's a local thing, and and you can get it quite inexpensively, and it's pretty balanced as far as alkalinity, and it's a, it's a decent water. So if I have to, I just I'm buying local, right? Mm-hmm. They're not transporting it in from somewhere, and it's right here, and so that's what I do. But I'm sure there's other waters that are around that are really good, and really healthy, and you know there's some there's one bottle that Mount Shasta. That's a really good water. And it's very clean. It's very alkaline. It's called Eternal Water. Okay. And that's my favorite if I have to break down and buy one. But, you know, I don't buy too many bottles of water. I try to just use my stuff at home. Right. And for people that don't have a filtration system or for some reason can't put one in their rental home or wherever they are, you can go to these water mills, <laughs> right. whatever they're called, right? You can, and you can get five-gallon or three-gallon bottles of water that are put through reverse osmosis. It's pretty clean. It gets most of the chemicals out. And that even that is still down to about 30, 35 cents a gallon, mm-hmm. which is much better and at least cook with it. You know, but it's a great source of water. You can just get a little um, thing that holds it and turn it upside down and do it. Yeah, and we found actually that the three-gallon bottles, as opposed to the five-gallon, are so much easier to manage, manipulate, get up and down off the counter, pour into your cooking pot, stuff like that. You <laughs> yeah, know, it's, it's much easier. It's to much use easier the small to ones. do, and the the advantage to that too is that having a unit or buying those things makes you aware of drinking water, and most people are chronically dehydrated and don't really realize it. They think any liquid that they drink is part of their water intake is not. What are some of the effects that someone might notice? I mean, you're, we're talking about the importance of drinking water, but I know people that don't drink water. You know, they drink flavored water or, you know, soda pop. So, all kinds of things. If you look at the statistics for soda pop and if they're drinking on average six or seven a day, where does that leave your water intake? Believe me, your body does not handle uh, water extracted out of soda pot the same way as it does clean water. Mm-hmm. And this is the other issue with clean water is that, you know, we have a problem with chronic dehydration. But drinking tap water, in my opinion, doesn't help the way water should because your body doesn't recognize water like that. It doesn't have the right charge to it. You don't absorb it the same way. So it's going to take more water to deal with your dehydration issue because of the state the water's actually in. What do you mean your body doesn't recognize it? Um, Water, if you want the perfect water, you would have water that's coming down a stream that's tumbling over rocks. It's been oxidized. Uh, It has more oxygen in Mm -hmm. it. It has a negative charge to it. It's in a form with a little bit of mineral, trace mineral, that Mm -hmm. your body has been used to throughout all the time. It recognizes that your body uses it differently. Uh, You know, there's a big craze going on. I've had one of these units for probably six or eight years. It's where they spin your water into a Mm -hmm. vortex. My kids call it tornado water. When you look <laughs> and, of course, all the other kids that come over to see this tornado water always want to try it. They so. <laughs> always want to see me turn on the on the spinner, right? So there's this unit that sits there, and it holds a half gallon of water, and I turn it on, and there's a tornado. Just vortex happens in the water for 10 minutes or so. I run it a couple times, and then that holds a negative charge, and it makes it easier 
for your body to absorb that type of water. Now, it may sound crazy, but that water feels wetter when you drink it. It does. I know what you mean. It's hard to describe. And the reason I got into it is I I had the unit, but I didn't use it every day. You know, it's another step. And I get lazy like everybody else, right? But I had the unit, and then I ended up with bladder cancer. And one of the things that makes bladder cancer or creates the environment to where you could get bladder cancer is dehydration. So I and I also know from experience of being in that company I spoke for that there's a lot of people claimed amazing cures with water through that machine. And so I didn't know, you know, I don't know the science behind it, but I started drinking that water to, you know, two of those pitchers almost a day. Of the volcano water, what you uh, call it, tornado, uh, tornado water. water. Tornado water. And that was part of my recovery program. But since then, a book has come out that's called The Fourth Phase of Water, mm. and he talks about the exact same thing, is that water has to be in a certain form mm. for your body to utilize it properly, and that form can be created with something that vortexes it or it's also in nature it's created by tumbling over rocks but also it's exposure to light and the different frequencies in light that changes the energy and now it's this super potent substance that just can change your health Hmm. so that's all fascinating and i still i'm I'm in the i'm in the habit now i spin my water every morning first thing (laughs) i get up i'm spinning water now when we spin our water when we take water with us we try not to take it in plastic bottles we try to put it in stainless steel or glass. I personally think water tastes better out of glass bottles than it does out of stainless steel even. That's just my preference. But can you tell our listeners why people should try to avoid plastic for carrying their well, water? The main, there's two main things with plastic. One is you don't know how long it's sit around in the store, and you don't know what quality of plastic it is. The lesser quality of plastic leaches into your water, mm-hmm. right? It'll leach what they call BPA. Now, mm-hmm. all the companies are trying to give you something that's BPA-free, but they usually load up on another chemical you don't want. They haven't discovered yet or talked about. But right. that particular chemical can change your hormones. It can cause cancer. It's, uh, it's just something you want to avoid. But the longer that bottle sits or it gets exposed to sunlight, it tends to degrade, and then that's in your water. But then this new thing just hit the news a couple of weeks ago, which kind of blew my mind. One, it blew my mind because I didn't know about it. But the other thing was was something that the scientists said that I found to be so ridiculous. What? That, well, let me tell you what they found in the water first. They tested something like 240 different bottles of water, and every single one of them had plastic particles floating around in it. Hmm. Little bitty particles about the size of a human hair. Not that long, but short, but about the same width and and there, some of the bottles had a hundred of them. Some of them had thousands of them. Wow. In it. Now they tried to claim that they think it's from twisting the cap off, but the, I just kind of felt when I heard that I kind of felt that's a cover up for trying not to say something negative about water companies. And they wouldn't release the brands that they found that had no plastic particles in it. They said there was 13 bottles they tested that did Hmm. not have it. But they didn't want to release it because they didn't want this report to be about um, singling out companies. They wanted it to be about an awareness that they're now studying water to figure out why these plastic particles are there and what they can do about it. But that's not the thing that really just made me laugh, was that they had a scientist at the end of the whole report say, you know, it's small enough, it's the type of particle that's small enough that it makes it in between the cells of your intestine, the lining, and goes undigested into your bloodstream. We don't know, and then he said, we don't know if that's bad for you or not. (laughs) <laughs> because it's in food and stuff, so we. It, but it warrants further study. And I almost fell off of my chair because if you're in the alternative health movement, the entire thing about your your intestinal strength, your beneficial bacteria, mm. you know, the all that 
and and basically it fun it focuses on your digestive energy and autoimmune conditions, right? So what is the main thing that triggers autoimmune? And there is small particles making it through the lining of your intestines mm. because it's either been aggravated by gluten or other things that inflame it, things that you're allergic to, and then it now makes it into your bloodstream and you're over a period of time your body gets worn out reacting to it and now you have an autoimmune condition, right? Mm. But there, but the scientist on this thing says, well, we don't know if a thousand <laughs> particles of plastic rolling around your bloodstream does anything to you. I think that's something none of us want. And, you know, and this is, again, there's 50 million people in this country with autoimmune conditions. You know, so what does that mean is, you know, why add plastic to it? Why that, add plastic my, to why your Why add diet? plastic to your already worn out immune system? Right. So... You can get a home filtration system. You can get filtered water. You can carry it in stainless steel, in glass. Let's talk about the amount of water that we should be drinking because, you know, some people drink too much. Some people drink too little. How can we find out what is the right amount for us personally? Well, everybody argues about that drink eight glasses a day, right? Well, the reality is if you could get everybody to do that, it'd probably be really good for them. Right. But most people need more than that. It depends on where you live. It depends on how much you move around, how much you sweat. It depends on your diet. And the reason it depends on your diet, what if you're a vegetarian who eats, you know, 80 percent of your diet is vegetables? You're getting a lot of water. Mm -hmm. Right. So it all depends on lifestyle and stuff. But everybody, I think personally, could do well by drinking at least two quarts of water a day, clean, filtered water Mm -hmm. and then whatever other water and liquids they get and and there's a lot of people that seem to thrive on three quarts a day and you know two is a minimum to keep you from chronic dehydration you have a story about somebody that drank was it drank too much water well you know as a friend of mine's daughter had it was trying to lose weight and she hit this plateau and she was at the gym and they you know the person that's working her out gave her all this nutritional advice and had her eating six meals a day and and wanted her to drink an enormous amount of water she's drinking like a gallon of water and basically it doesn't make any sense you know that's okay you're an olympic athlete you're someone who's out running triathlons or something Mm -hmm. but the average person going to the gym three times a week to to lift some weights and and uh, lose a little weight doesn't need a gallon of water. Well, what would hurt you by drinking a gallon of water? Well, for her, she was just bloated all the time and she couldn't lose weight. And as soon as I adjusted that for her and told her, no, you don't need to eat six times a day. Just eat your, when you're hungry and eat three times at the most mm-hmm. and drop the water down to something that's more reasonable, she started losing weight again and she feels fantastic. Hmm. It was just too much for a system. And you can tell that easily. Your fingers will get swollen a bit. Mm-hmm. You know, that means you're, if you have edema in your upper body, that means you're not moving water. That means your digestive system's overloaded with water. If you you have edema in your ankles, now that means that you're basically, you know, your kidneys are the problem. Mm-hmm. So there's a difference in it. And and a lot of times if you eat a vegetarian diet or you're consuming a lot of what you think is healthy for you, like spirulina or stuff, those things can make your digestion a little colder and you don't process water the same. So you can end up bloated, have a lot of upper body edema. You have to pay attention to these things. Right. Right. So tell me a story about something where someone added more water to their intake and how that worked for them. Well, I probably have hundreds of incidences where people um, in my, that company that I used to work for uh, just started consuming water and had major changes to their health. And that happens because you're just dehydrated. You know, most people think, well, the only thing that happens when you're dehydrated, you have some dry skin, you get thirsty, um, maybe you're tired a little bit or you know, something like that. But the reality is a lot of times heartburn, constipation, even getting urinary tract infections, um, that's all related to just being chronically dehydrated. Hmm. And so a lot of things can change for you. In fact, one of the most fascinating things I've ever seen around water was finding out that in Japan, they actually have something called the Japanese water cure. 
And it makes sense to me. You know, I've never done it because I haven't had most of these problems. But they have this water cure system set up to where all it is is that you wake up. You don't do anything else. You don't brush your teeth, nothing else, until you drink four glasses of water. Four glasses of water. Four glasses of water. And then you don't eat anything else or drink anything else for 45 minutes. And you can build up with certain specific conditions. They'll have you drink more. And they'll tell you when you start out, you might only be able to drink two, but you got to get up to four, Hmm. right? And then that, in their opinion, changes your whole body. Your body needs it for flushing out you know, toxins from your colon, it helps your body. You can help you with, you know, making new blood cells, cleans your colon, gets toxins out of your system. It can even help you lose weight. Hmm. This is one of the other things I, I realized in that company I was in that giving talks for. It was that a lot of people, if they just drank water at night when they were hungry and wanted a snack, they lost weight because it was a lot of times they were just thirsty. We've messed up our thirst mechanism so much because we snack and eat and drink so many sweet things that it's not really reliable for uh, a way of thinking that we're thirsty or dehydrated. So you're saying that sometimes when you think you're hungry, you might actually be thirsty. Yeah. So, yeah, it's true. But this Japanese water cure, they claim they can cure high blood pressure in some cases in 30 days of just drinking water Mm -hmm. in the morning. It's very and, you know, it's interesting because it could be part of anything that's any condition that's involves inflammation. Dehydration could make that worse. Hmm. You remember me telling you the story of my friend who had a vertigo and she had they were checking her out for brain injury. So they did right. an image of yeah, her brain and the doctor came out. She was in her 60s and he said to her. Wow, you have a beautiful brain. And, and she right away said, wow, no man's ever told me that, right? But, but he was laughing. He goes, no, I'm serious. He goes, most of the time when I see the brain of someone who's over 60, it's shrunk by 20%. Hmm. He goes, yours is fully sized. He hmm. goes, you must drink a lot of water and not drink any alcohol. Hmm. And she goes, well, I do drink a lot of water, but I drink alcohol. She goes, I don't, you know, excessively, but I like a couple of drinks and... She goes, but she lives on a lake that's really crystal clear, and she has a filtration system into her where it comes into her house, mm-hmm. and she's conscious about drinking water. Hmm. So that was quite an eye opener because most people over fifty, you know, and, and people, especially elderly people, do not drink water at all. Mm-hmm. You know, so adding to their inflammation in their brain that may be causing memory issues is just chronic dehydration. Now, what would we look for ourselves for dehydration? I know you know from a medical standpoint, you go in if you think you're dehydrated or you've been out in the sun exercising um, you go into the e r they're going to look for certain signs for dehydration, which is what I would call you know medical hydration they're going to put a saline into you right away um, well, one of the easiest things everybody looks at and you can do this yourself is what is the color of your urine? The color of your urine. Is this if like the color? Dark, <laughs> if it's too dark or dark, then you aren't drinking enough water. Huh. So you want a pale ale. You want a pale, yeah. <laughs> you want it to be pale or clear, and that indicates that you have a great water intake. Hmm. You know, I studied, I, you know, I got into the health by studying Chinese medicine, and, and part of that is in that theory around health is that you should be drinking enough early in the day so that by 3 or 4 o'clock, you've gone to the bathroom at least four or five times. Hmm. That's a sign that you've had enough fluid. And then they don't believe in drinking much liquid after 3 to 5 o'clock. Now, what does drinking coffee or green tea or what if you take a supplement like Tian Chi that has um, herbs and nutraceuticals in that? How will that affect how your processing water or how you need water well if you're drinking something that's a big formula like that you should probably have a full glass of water a half hour after you take it just because you mean with the tea on chi yeah it's a lot to process it gives your body a chance to flush it through and mm-hmm. everything works better that way make sure you're hydrated things like that what if you're a coffee drinker or tea well if you're drinking coffee or tea 
they claim that that dehydrates you. But then mm-hmm. there's studies come out and say that that's not true. But in my opinion, they're right. It does dehydrate <laughs> you. I don't care how many studies you want to show me. If I take green tea in a capsule and I take it a couple times a day, and if there's a day or two where I don't drink enough water, my fingers crack. Mm-hmm. And it's always the green tea. So Mm -hmm. if I'm taking green tea, in fact, I quit taking green tea and drinking green tea because green tea is in tea on tea. And -hmm. I realize I'm getting too much green tea. This Mm -hmm. is true, folks. You can get too much of a lot of things, whether it's herbs, nutrients, whatever it is. And so in me, what it did was made my skin dry and it started to crack. Hmm. But there's no danger of that if you just are taking supplements or taking nutraceuticals. No, that's just something I noticed. So I do know it's dehydrating. You know, and I would just forget to drink water sometimes, and there it shows up. So within a couple, of what I what do I do then? I drink at least three liters of water a day, and a couple of days later, it's gone. Or it starts; to, it's almost all the way gone. You know? hmm. So, what is this craze with alkaline water? What does this mean? Why should well, I care? There's been a big craze with alkalinity for the last twenty years in the health field. Twenty years, at least. You know, I remember it back in the early 90s, so when I was drinking bottled water. But I still think it's the most confusing thing in the whole health (laughs) industry. What? And that nobody really (laughs) understands alkalinity because your digestion has a different alkaline than your intestines, and your bloodstream has a different alkalinity than your cells, and your body regulates it within a very, very fine thing, right? So we shouldn't care about alkaline water? Well, you should care that... It's slightly alkaline, right? You should care because that's what mountain spring water is, naturally alkaline. Okay. It's different to get water that's naturally alkaline as a, something that's been treated to become alkaline. It's a, there's, a, there's a process they put it through, and I think your body utilizes it different. So slightly alkaline is great. But you don't. I really don't believe in these things where you buy a thousands and thousands of dollars you spend on a machine and you get your water up to 14 alkalinity, I don't think it's good for you long term. I think the results they get in the beginning are because they're dehydrated Mm, and that it may correct a few things right away. But long term, you don't want to be putting that high alkalinity into your stomach because your stomach is supposed to be able to digest nails <laughs> your, your stomach is so acidic you know if you've ever tasted apple cider vinegar mm-hmm. right just you know, oh my god it's so acidic right well that's a your stomach if it's working right is 150 times stronger acid wise than wow. vinegar so if you dilute that continuously with alkaline water, you're not going to digest your food the same. Huh, that's an interesting point. Then your point. skin will suffer, your hair will suffer, your memory will suffer because you won't be What able, was that? <laughs> you memory won't be absorbing suffer? things from your food. And it's worse with someone who's, who's eating a vegetarian diet because Why? a vegetarian is going to be eating all these alkaline foods anyway all these uh, vegetables and stuff that are more diet. cooling and they're you know and they're not eating enough usually big chunks of protein which really stimulate the acid mm. so their digestion like everybody else and by the way everybody's digestion gets weaker once they hit 50 it just starts going down and low stomach acid is a huge problem mm. anyway so if you're just pouring too much alkaline water into it then it could, you know, make that worse. And for vegetarians, again, I know this is my case with me because I eat a lot of vegetable food. I eat tons of it. I love salads. I love that amount of food. I'm I'm one of those guys that probably does eat ten servings of vegetables in a day. So, Listeners, if you could see his salad bowl, <laughs> so like... <laughs> so for me to just pile on a bunch of you know twelve alkaline water into my gut just doesn't. <laughs> doesn't really do much for me, right? Other than it might make me bloated or I don't process it that Mm. well. I'm better off having a little something thrown in there. It gives me a little acidity, you know? So what are any recommendations that you would have for home filtration systems? Do you have any ones that you like or would recommend to our listeners? Well, if I was going to go out and buy another unit, which I am pretty soon, Oh, um, hmm. because my other one's getting a little worn out and I actually have a couple filters left. So I'm probably six or seven months down the road from buying one. Mm. But if I had to just get on the net and buy one, I get a Berkey. 
A Berkey. A Berkey. B-U-R-K-E? B-E-R-K-E-Y. And they just have simple, incredible machines that sit on your counter. They're stainless steel. You put your water in it. You can have two and a half gallons filtered Hmm. through it at any time. And it's, you know, a carbon gravity filter cleans, in most cases, 99% of the stuff out of your water. And it's great. And so... That particular company I've looked at for a long time. It's highly recommended by a lot of people in the health industry. And that's probably where I'm going to go next time I buy a machine. By the way, they don't pay me anything. I I don't even know anybody (laughs) at that company. I just know a lot of people that, that have really great opinions about these things and research them. Love that machine. Hmm. Well, maybe you'll get a lucky listener. Maybe they'll send you one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I hope. I hope the Berkey guys listen. Hey, Berkey. Love you guys. <laughs> All right, on that note, anything else you would like to say about water? No, I think that the main thing is people have to start pay atten- paying attention just drink more. to just drinking mm-hmm. water. Yeah. Make it part of your life, you know, and drink it in between meals. Don't drink it with a meal. That That messes up your digestion. In fact, this is something people don't understand. If you drink a big glass of water like a 16 ounce bottle or a glass of really clean water an hour and a half before you eat your meal you'll produce more stomach acid you'll you'll digest your food better all these things will happen because your body has to have that to produce all the other actions that go on in your system right right yeah and i just have to say from a beauty perspective i can always tell when i look at a woman's skin whether she drinks water or whether she just doesn't. You can always tell by the quality of the skin, the clarity of the skin. I mean, diet has a lot to do with it too, but there's a particular dehydration that sets in with women um, that's noticeable, especially if they're coffee drinkers or they have a lot of caffeine in their soda or, you know, coffee. And um, it, it can wreak havoc with your skin. Oh, yeah. And, you know, if you're living here in the Vegas area like we are, you know, that sun's out at 117 degrees, oh, yeah. you walk outside, you have to be hydrating all day long. And that's one of the things that visitors find when they come to our house is that within just a few hours of having a guest, they're wanting to drink water. And we say, yeah, you forget when you're in the desert, you just are automatically you drink water. so it's much of, more thirsty. It's part of life, you know. Yeah. All right. Well, the water of life. Yeah, that's really, it's what it's about. Life is impossible without clean water. Well, thanks for tuning in again, everyone, to another HerbWorks podcast. This has been Laura Shakti, your co-host. And Roger Drummer. So thanks for tuning in. If you want more information, you can go to HerbWorks.com. 